that little message asking. All right, there we go. Okay. So Jackie, one of the things that you asked in last week's class is, are the rules of drawing the same as the rules of painting, right? And uh, the answer to that question is yes, they are. And in fact, this is one of my favorite lessons on, um, on uh, drawing. And it's in a book called The Oil Painting Course You've Always Wanted. So regardless of what material you're using the or what you know medium you're using or what tool you're using to apply to the surface everything is related to these ideas so a really good painting book should have at least one chapter on drawings you can see these are all about drawing um and drawing and as you know i've 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 been very like uh vocal about my how bored i boring i find the pencil <laughs> But I love to draw, just not with the pencil as much as with other things. <laughs> so <laughs> you will find yourself that there are things you're going to love. And yeah, Jackie, this is a perfect opportunity to play with um, your materials. It's a really good one. Um, at the beginning, though, let's talk about uh, the sphere. So what I'd like you to do to start by drawing. So we are gonna do a sphere that is lit on one side. Oops. So go ahead and start by just drawing a circle with whatever implement you're using. You can even do this with paint if you wanted to. And then it's literally a circle. And then on either side of the circle is a straight line because this indicates the wall and this indicates the table or the surface, whatever this is sitting on. And then this is what we call the cast shadow. So this should tell you what direction the light's coming from. What direction is the light coming from? Top left. Yeah. Top left, coming down like this, right? Um, so when we start to sketch, so go ahead and sketch this. Little thing you're doing. And then if the light's coming from this side, from here, um, the absolute lightest part is going to be basically where here. It's going to be like where uh, the light first encounters the object. Dang it. Hold on here. There we go. Get that right. And then in this location here, not going to circle here, this is the highlight. You're painting, it's often the last thing you'll put in, unless you're using watercolor, then in which case you definitely want to preserve it. And then this side is the light side. Go ahead and sketch that out. When you're done, you can send it in or So this is pretty dark. And then if you want to, you can kind of go around, you can darken around the edge of your sphere. Like that. By the way, anybody else who's working on anything, please feel free to send it in, ask me questions. 
I'll have I'll be happy to look at it. Love to look at it. Okay. And then maybe the table is a little bit lighter. Tell the difference between the table and the machine is having trouble focusing today. There we go. Basically, the lightest part of the sphere is here. And then because it's closest to the light, and then the darkest part kind of comes around this side, where the sphere turns around, turns away from the light. OK, this is this. My little guy is having so much trouble focusing today. Um, so this is really one side of the sphere, and this is the other side of the sphere. So I hear people often say the right brain is not logical, the left brain is logical. To me, there is nothing more logical than this process. It is lightest, closest to the light. It's darkest, farthest away from the light. So the next time somebody uses the word logic, oh, hi, Diana, uh, for you, to you, remind them that there are different logic systems. And in the logic system of drawing, the beauty of it is it's very obvious, right? Where things are light or dark, which means that once you, and you can tell things like, like, like for example, the direction of the shadow is telling us something, right? About where the darkest part, so the darkest parts of the sphere are here. You can tell, that's like a little pet peeve of mine. <laughs> People use the word illogical to describe the right brain. And they often are the most confused people I've met. <laughs> like, they're very confused. Like, uh, so I'm like, let's have a re-education about this. So the heaviest, darkest part of the shadow is where the object is actually, it's, it's in the cast shadow and it's where the object is blocking the light. So the cast shadow is pretty dark and it's darker, of course, right, than the table. This cast shadow. But even within this cast shadow, it's even darker kind of right here. The darkest where the light can't penetrate because the object is there, right? And it's far away from the light. The object is completely blocking the light. These are like, we haven't even gotten to like what's actually happening in, right, the sphere. We're kind of looking at what's happening around the sphere. Um, there's another thing I really love about this exercise, and that's this notion when we get into the sphere itself. 
that although in general we go from light to dark, the very edge of the sphere right before it turns around uh, experiences something called reflected light. So in the darkest part of a sphere, right, this dark side, the very edge <clears throat> is maybe a two. It's, it's caught, got what we have call a reflected edge. And once you know about it, you'll see it everywhere. And that means that the sphere is somewhere picking up another light source. And as it turns around, this is really important. If you're drawing a cheek, for example, the cheek on the dark side, right before it turns around, will have a little slightly light edge because it's picking up a reflection from somewhere else. Um, the I'm trying to think of the upper lip, that little light edge across the upper lip is actually uh, a reflected edge or not, um, perhaps not. Um, but you will notice it. And, and the thing is, you'd probably never notice it if you didn't know to look for it. So to me, that's a really cool thing here. So this is like, if this is a one, right? And the light, this may be a two. And your dark shadow here is a five. This little reflected edge is a two. So start to look at rounded objects. You will begin to see that as every as things turn around and we go from a lighter to a darker edge, you'll see the reflected edge just before that dark turns around. It's a nice little kind of pop out point that is helpful to know about when you're painting. And then, of course, it's kind of a gradual shift. So we maybe go from one to something that's slightly darker. This is called a half tone, very specifically because it's halfway between light and dark. So it's kind of middle. And then it gets darker. Maybe more like a four. Once you get to painting, we spend a lot of time working on this transition between sort of a middle, a half tone to the core shadow, which is the darkest part. So Jackie, you might be having some fun there with your charcoal. You might be finding that that's more interesting than I like working with. It kind of is. Yeah. I, I try not to prejudice you here, <laughs> but very, I'm failing. Uh, charcoal is my favorite drawing medium. Absolutely. Um, although ink is pretty great too. I'm going to take a picture of this, the core shadow, the half tone. You want to get fancy and you want your drawing to be really fancy. We'll even talk about something called the lost edge, which is probably on the dark side over here, where part of the sphere meets have the reflected edge. You want that in that comes up to about here. But then up here, there may be parts where the edge of the sphere and the edge of the background kind of fade into each other. That's called a lost edge, where you can't really see because the values are the same. You ever noticed how a shadow will cross something and then you can't see the edge? So that's a lost edge. And uh, everything has lost edges when light is involved. And, it's, and if you want your drawings to be real, really realistic, you should look at where the lost edges are and reflect that by kind of, you know, uh, shuffling out. 
for erasing out or you know loosening up uh, the, the 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 hardness of your edge. So there you go. Just let the edge kind of neat, huh? And there are a lot of things that are spherical. I used to introduce this at the very beginning of drawing, but I found that until you have some context, you don't understand how important this is. So it actually helps to like just jump into some drawing of objects and then go back and go, okay, what's going on here? What is the pattern happening? So that's why I usually bring this in a little bit later. In the day. I'll, I'll bring this lesson out a couple times a year. And actually what's interesting is every time I do it, I'm always like, oh, there's another nuance to this that I thought. Those of you who have just come in and you're not doing the lesson, just send in whatever you're working on as you're working on it. We'd love to see it. And when you're I only have a sketch, but I'll do it then. Send it over. Love to see it. It's fun to have all the different themes. So there's a lot of things that the sphere. Yeah, so in painting, we spend a lot of time trying to recreate this in paint, right? How do you make these edges? So it's clearly light, medium, dark, right? But the, but it's soft. Uh, in painting, painting the sphere is the kind of ultimate practice. Using a drawing implement is a little bit easier, like a pencil or a piece of paper. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I love the peach uh, in the light. I love that sort of peach halftone. Super. Who is this, Diana? It is uh, my tenant's dog. Oh. <laughs> so. It's my, my puppy's playmate, I guess. Oh. Uh, oh. oh, nice, Tina. How old is your son? 21. 21. And you've got that challenge of the mouth open. Yep. Right. Uh, and the face at an angle. <laughs> Because you love it, because you love a challenge. Mm -hmm. Just looking to see everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. Look at, pay attention to um, the space between the lip, the bottom of the lip, and his chin. Okay. Uh, you can make that too, make that go too long. Is it too long now? You uh, think? I can't really tell because you're just at your very. Yeah. So, yeah. It's okay, but you. I'm just looking at what could be happening. Okay. That's really cute. Tashween is spending time with her cute little nephew. Look at that guy. That's so cute. So whoever's doing this exercise, we'll go on to the next one, which is drawing lighted with a cube uh, when I see your sphere. But take your time. This is also one of those things that's kind of relaxing and, you know, less pressure because you're not actually trying to draw <laughs> and make a finished drawing. How 
How's everybody doing? Besides Janet being terrified. <laughs> Why are you terrified? Well, her son just got his driver's license. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Is uh, he a daredevil? Oh, no. At least I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> okay, Jackie, that looks pretty good. So, uh, helpful? Is this yeah. helpful? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like super helpful, right? Very okay. much. All right, so let's um, sketch a cube. It's funny, uh, I remember I was saying to somebody, I think it was Nina to Tanya, um, about everybody knows how to sketch a cube, and she was like, I don't know how to sketch a cube. <laughs> I was never taught, or I don't know, or if somebody tried to teach me and I couldn't do it. There's a couple of ways to do it. Um, we're going to do one where, where the corner is kind of the thing that's facing towards us. So basically, it starts like this, with like a V, like a Y, really. Right? And then... And then the Y at the bottom. Now the, the V at the bottom should be a little bit steeper than the V at the top. It shouldn't be the same. And then there is Y and then a slightly steeper V, and then straight lines here, and these straight lines. Right. So we have a little diamond at the top a little bit. Actually, really. And here, we'll put this cube also on a table. And I'm going to do the shadow coming off this way. So if the cast shadow is here and the cube is here, where's the light coming from? This is the cast shadow. One. Light is coming from what direction? <laughs> Front and left. <laughs> Thank you. I was about to say something really absurd, like my cat just got run over by a car or something. Oh, Muka just looked at me when I said well, that. Well, don't even say that as a joke. Oh, I know. It's a terrible joke. It's a terrible joke. And Muka just looked at me like, what? <laughs> yeah, she should. Right here. All right. So if the light's coming from this direction, the top is going to be the lightest. So this is going to be the light area, right? And... This area is going to be fairly light, but a little bit darker. I don't want to call it a half tone. This is kind of more like the proper half tone. So this is like a half. This is like a, I don't know, a three. This is like dark but not like as dark as what's underneath right the object or the cast shadow and um, not really a reflected edge here because the here the sides are more so I mean I don't think so I don't think there's like a reflected edge really that comes off of these maybe sometimes but usually that is something that's kind of reserved for rounded 
subjects. You'll see that the nice thing about a sphere Edges are very clear. You want to kind of dark wall. Right, so if you're drawing a house or um, a skyscraper or I don't know, any man made structure. This is the you know, as as a, you probably heard me say a lot, um, there's a plane change here, right? The plane change means there's literally a shift in direction. And once there's a shift in direction, as you can see, there's a shift in the light. The light changes. When you get to faces and figures, there's a lot of different plane changes. So many. Which is what makes them so awesome and makes learning them so fun. Once you learn them, it makes it a little bit not entirely easy. I would never say portraiture is easy, but I would say it makes it doable. No Jean today, huh? Maybe she's I mean, to bully her into joining? No, I know she's busy. I know they're like just totally making her jump. If I bully her, she'll probably start laughing. <laughs> you could bully her just to make her start laughing, but I bet you won't. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> bully her at least into coming and saying hello since she's always trying to bully me to show up that's right that's oh i'm gonna add that gene thank you <laughs> tell him here five more minutes that i'm going out for dinner yeah Ooh. in fact i'm going to put your name as the co-author of this bullying text <laughs> okay well that works for me i'm crying <laughs> Yeah, she won't believe that. <laughs> and I'm doing it in all caps. And then if you want to, you can actually, well, we'll finish this. It may only be Jackie doing this. So Jackie, when you're done, just send me a picture of this. Okay, I just have a bit of a slight trouble freehanding a cube, so it doesn't look very cube-like. Okay, let me take a look at it. Maybe I can help. Okay. Yeah. Like I don't have a very steady hand. It's a training, you know, actually to get that to, to work. There's, it's interesting. I mean, the other thing we can- You lean your little finger on the paper, you get steadier. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh -huh need to do is you have here I'll show you you've got this going on I'll show you with the eraser actually so okay. lines up here are going like this uh-huh and this angle's got to be much worse angle it more yeah valid thing to find confusing so it's just way more angled and if you really want to be technical about it you could draw a line 
see the vanishing point. Right? Oh, that's good. That might be that's good. The vanishing point here, which means that that can actually help you. Yes. Right. Get those lines right. I know it's really hard to get that right because we just want to make things bigger than they really are. Yep. It's a normal thing. Actually, that's not too bad. Now I feel like I'm the only one doing the class. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. You're just the only one doing the assignment. <laughs> like the remedial whatever. It's interesting. <sighs> this group has off and on these people. Many of these people have been taking classes for years, and every single one of them has done this at least once. Do I feel better? Maybe. Yes. Don't worry about it. You just happen to. You know, it's summer, man. Um, <laughs> that's all I have to say. It's summer, getting anybody to show up to class is like, you know, it's it's a small numbers in the summer. Although we have many plans for uh, the fall. Hey, you know, interesting, Janet, about this particular newsletter, which had the video, uh, mm -hmm. lots more hits from BuzzFeed on it. <laughs> oh, really? oh, that's cool. Oh, great. Yeah. They're a video group. Uh, it, they're a video group. <laughs> they're definitely a video group. Leah. Yeah. What? What, baby? I can't find my favorite dark green pastel. Oh, this could be a long searching session. What's wrong? It's Where? not. I have a substitute, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is a Sennelier, it's super dark. Nice. And there's an empty spot in my box where it's supposed to be and it's not there. And I feel sad about it. So sad. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I'm happy for you that that is what you're sad about. Yeah, right? Oh. Life is pretty oh. good. <laughs> no, I have to be sad about that. You know, I... Um, I avoided having my bathroom ceiling collapse today. That's awesome. It's, um, well, so last night, okay, so if this is TMI, you can just tell me to shut up, but I keep a tower of toilet paper next to my toilet that goes up the heat pipe because I think it's fun to stack up real high. And uh, it wasn't too high last night and my daughter was in the bathroom and she comes out and she says, go look in the bathroom. What is this? And there was this brown stuff like on the wall and on top of the top toilet paper roll. Oh. And I don't know what it is. It, I don't know what that is. And it didn't smell like there was no smell, but I thought, well, a cat must have puked, you know, cause they do that. So yeah. I cleaned it up. It didn't smell like anything. There was no odor. And I cleaned it up. Everything was fine. And, and this morning, I saw it again. I'm like, what the hell? This is brown stuff, but I don't see where it's coming from. What, where is it coming from? It was on top of my heat pipe. There's brown water dripping out of my ceiling. In there. So, so I called the super. Exactly. I called the super. And he came like immediately. And my ceiling is squishy. Oh, and wrinkly. So he ended up having to cut the ceiling out. And there was a big, scary, gross hole above my toilet. And I'm scared of the hole. So he covered it up with plywood. That's what I'm really sad about. And I had to take all my paintings out of the bathroom and I wrecked my walls doing it. So I need to be sad about something that's not major because that, like, I can't <laughs> <think> about it. <laughs> that's, yeah. Your, your building is not made out of stone? I wish it was, because then I wouldn't hear any neighbor noise. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It is not. And he the super was going back and forth between my apartment and the 
people above me flushing their toilet and when he would flush it would literally drip down however he did determine that it was not dirty water it was the clean water that comes in when you flush but it's still disgusting so horrible (laughs) <laughs> that was my day. Yeah. And he said, he said, it's good that you called me when you did as soon as you saw the dripping. Cause if it had gone a couple more days, my ceiling would have collapsed. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. I when, have like when my have walls in there. There's bathroom in your bathroom. <laughs> no, not quite because the, there's like piping up there, but my bathroom walls are covered in paintings oh, and no. I would have been very upset about that. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick to being sad about my green pastel. (laughs) Green pastel, Jessica. Be sad. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how do paintings do in bathrooms? Mine are fine. So um, a a couple of things on that. I work on panels, not canvas. So there's no absorption of moisture i don't so worry I about it painting on a wood panel i can hang it in my bathroom without concern I would i don't worry about it too much but again you know it's just my own work in my own home if i had bought an expensive painting i wouldn't hang it in the bathroom but you know i really like being in my bathroom and looking in the mirror and behind me and all around me are all of my paintings. It's just really nice. Um, I keep my window open in there a lot. So I get pretty good ventilation and I don't have, it's just me and my daughter. So there's not like a constant stream of people steaming up the bathroom. Um, Leah, is that you being a robot? Yeah, I guess so. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah, that's better. I wouldn't hang a canvas in there. No. Oh. And I, I'm okay with panels. I have canvas in my bathroom. But it's probably your paintings, right? Yeah, but I've had them for 20 years. Nothing has ever happened. Right. Yeah, I think they're fine. I think it's fine. But if you they're were fine. responsible for somebody else's paintings, like you would you know, them. even being canvas, it it self stretches because it gets dampness on it. So it keeps nice and stretched. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's that too. That is that is actually a really valid point. I just think I mean, how Janet, how much like, like I curate a hotel, and I would never put somebody else's uh, canvases in a bathroom, only metal. Right, like only something that God, we we only put metal prints in the bathroom. That's my take out. And I asked about canvas wrap prints, and the answer was so. But you know, that's not my work. That's somebody else's work. So I don't think I'd do it in a hotel. I wouldn't put a canvas in the bathroom in a hotel. It's just too much of a, a transient crowd, and you don't know who does what. And at home, I know my bathroom conditions, and my bathroom, you know, it steams up when when you shower, but other than that it's not a humid place I don't worry about it I, the bottom line is I don't worry about it no. but I would worry about water coming from the ceiling on my paintings yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh the next thing we're going to try is a cylinder so one of the things I want to review about a cylinder drawing it I like to start with Remember the tendency, the way of thinking about the cylinder is that this is the halfway point, right? Exactly between the top and the bottom. But that's not really true. The halfway point from looking at it from the edge is a little bit more like here. So the front half is a little bit more scooped and the back half is a little bit narrower. Like so. And then the other thing about a cylinder to know is that when it's sitting on a table, which this one is, when it's sitting somewhere, I know it isn't flat. I know it isn't curved, but it looks like it's curved. Uh, I notice a lot of people make this rookie mistake 
of drawing like a cup or a saucer with a flat top or bottom like this. And uh, that's not what's happening. And the reason that's not what's happening is that really the cylinder also has sides, even though it's rounded, just like a sphere has slides, the light and the dark side. So the side, just like, just like a cube, the side of the cylinder kind of goes up, just like a road, right? It gets a little narrower. So remember, whenever you're drawing a cup, that this back side, even though it is exactly halfway, looks smaller than the front side, and that the bottom is curved a little bit on either end. Curved up. And it's interesting, I've had many students argue, well, I don't see that. And I'm like, but you will. If they think about it, they'll see it. They'll see it, right? You think because it's three dimensional. If if they think about it in terms of not being flat, they'll see it. Right. So we're drawing right on a flat surface, and we have to convey the illusion of three dimension. So this is something that's always happening. So go ahead and sketch out your cylinder. Uh, let's put the let's make the shadow point this way. Let's bring Oh boy, Jessica, that is horrific. <laughs> that's, no. that's so bad. <laughs> I'm scared of it. Yeah, you're right. It's like some kind of terrifying. It's like a portal to a demon <laughs> dimension. <laughs> to a not good dimension. <laughs> It's covered with plywood now. The super is going to come back next week to make sure there's no more moisture because he can't rebuild the ceiling without it being dry. And if it's still wet, the plumber has to come and replace the pipe from upstairs. Good job, Jackie. That's it. You can bring this side up even higher. Okay. So even though we know that this cup is sitting, this cylinder is sitting flat on the ground. Even though we know that, we are going to depict it as having a curved surface. And then if the light is coming from here, of course, right, it's light to about here, like a sphere. It's light here. However, a little bit darker than up here, slightly. And then like the sphere, we have a half tone here. Which darkens. So here's a half tone. And then it gets darker. And then there's a reflected edge, just like a sphere. 
I'm going to bail. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Gina. Bye, Gina. Good to see you all. All right. Have fun at dinner. I'll bug Jean. Because yeah. she didn't get bullied. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye. Bye. I'm glad, like, Gina comes on vacation. It's good. Isn't that nice? It is. It is really good. So you're going to see there's once again this reflected edge, right? Just like a, the cylinder is a lot like a sphere that way. I know this is like, oh, Mocha, it's too hot for you out there. You can't go. Give me one moment. Come on, baby. Leah, do you need a mooka moment? She's, she's crying. Do you need a mooka moment? Oh, poor baby. She does this very sad little pathetic cry. It's like, A very quiet cat. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Yes, face is a little too long as we were discussing. But looking good. Oh, I found my favorite green pastel. There you go. Nothing to be sad about. Not I was bad. in the wrong spot. That's right. Now I'm not sad. I love it. Such a nice dark value. Uh, uh, who is your Janet? Who is your bunker mate? Oh, Chuang. 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 Yeah, he's posting the picture of the dude you drew upside down. <laughs> oh, that was the Olivia. She wasn't a dude. Oh, right, the person, Olivia. Chuang's drawings. Portraits all look like sculptures. Hmm. Well, that's he's, what he does, right? That's his he's thing. A sculptor, yeah. I'm following him. I like seeing his stuff. Anyway, it's funny to see what you did last night about that nose, looking at the nose. Yeah. <laughs> they look really funny. Nose. All right. She somehow rigged her camera up so it was above her, and we could see right up her nose. That's awesome. And I'm going to send over this picture that she has in painting. That she's put in because it's such a, it's a painting that shows how these light sources work in color. I really love this book. Janet, what are you working on? I'm working on my Garden of Eden. Can you send us a picture at some point? I will. Does okay. any of her studio shots? Shot, she's working on something. What? Did you haven't sent us studio shots in a while? I know you're no, working. because I've got a series going. I'm not going to release them until they're all done. Fair enough. I'm doing number four of seven.
Um, this is lighter, Jackie, over here. Oh, okay. So more yeah. like a one? Kind of the, the, like a one and a half. Okay. This is really, it really is, this is the dividing line here. And that's, that's about, is that like halfway or a little more than halfway? Halfway, exactly. Yep, because as at half point point, it kind of starts to turn away. Okay. Very good questions, by the way. Because we're used to thinking about a cube having sides, but it's weird to think about something rounded having sides. Yeah. And the side is where things start to turn away, which is usually about halfway. Same with the cube, same with the sphere, right? About halfway, the sphere starts to turn away. All right. Jackie, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Three. Because once we get to the cylinder, we have an open cylinder, right? Like a cup, yeah. a vase. And the kind of last really neat thing about that. And if you didn't know this, maybe you know it that it helps you. It's easier to see it. Right? So say there's the rim here, right? Mm -hmm. There's the inside. If the light from here. The inside of the cup will be darker. And the opposite side is the light side. Right? So if the light's coming from here, the inside goes from darker to mid-tone to light, opposite side. And the outside goes from dark to medium. To light. And there's a rim. There's a rim. The rim is light. OK. Right? Because the rim is facing up. Yeah. But anything that's inside here, and so this is a jar, a coffee cup, anything, you'll see that the light side is actually because, and think about it, as the light's coming down, it's not hitting here, it's coming in here. 
Yes. Right? So that makes sense. Yep. So, and then as usual. And that's not really something you, I mean, when you think about it, it makes sense. Yes, that crash was Megan tripping over my computer cord. Yes, but I was trying to offer you a wild blue, a wild blackberry, so. You can come say hi if you want to. Hi, Megan. Come say hi. Okay, I'm coming to say hi. Here. You see, oh, kitty! Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, hold up, Megan. I'm going to spotlight you. I want to show these. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, look at me. Oh, kitty. Oh, kitty. Oh, kitty. He really does not want to be here. Okay. <laughs> oh, cute guy. What a dog, Jackie. Oh my god. He, he has a bad attitude. Because he annoys all the, we have two older cats and he's young and he just annoys them. He just attacks them all the time. Of course. Leah doesn't know anything about that. No, I was just trying to think of something to say about <laughs> Leah not knowing anything about that. No. <laughs> oh my God. We just went away for two days for the first time and we had a cat sitter stay list of directions for what to do with the two of them was ridiculous and I came back and I was like how was it and she's like he is such a toddler <laughs> I'm familiar he is such a toddler Okay, here you go, Jackie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so now, Jackie, your job is to draw an object. So you'll see here, now I'd like you to pick an object, anything. Maybe your cup, maybe your coffee cup. Yes, I have a coffee cup. But try drawing it. Okay. Try drawing it. Set it somewhere. And now that you have all this. Mm -hmm. My little toddler, Sunny, she's starting to enjoy painting, so she's keeping pretty mellow while we're painting. Really? So she's kind of picking up on your mood and calming down? Oh, she's here. I mean, she hasn't nudged me once since we started. That's 
kind of a, a miracle. That's kind of amazing. Oh, well, she is such a little brat. So Jackie, this is the beginning. Of beginning the of the end. What's that? It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> and also, Megan is attacking that kitty cat right behind me, and there's a lot of like noise that's really quite annoying. Hey, Megan, why don't you come here and explain to the class why you don't want to draw? <laughs> really? It takes too much time and effort. Uh, too, too much time and effort. And so I'm terrible at it. So. And she's terrible at it. It's hard. Well, you get better if you practice, but I get it. It's definitely, you got to practice. Well, away I go. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Nice, nice talking to you. Leah Katie came last night. Really? Yeah, she um, she has her first real modeling gig. Oh, is that exciting? Did you see she's opened a new Instagram account? Yeah. I said, way to rock the Goodwill dress and the borrowed shoes. Right? <laughs> Good. She looks great. Yeah, she's really ha happy, too. Oh, that's so amazing. It's great. This is one of uh, Janet's more in uh, uh, a, a friend of both of ours, but met by as a model for Janet's group, and she's very creative model. Models. She's a good artist too, though. Yeah, she's a very good artist. Yeah. Draw and she can paint. Janet, whatever happened with your paint issue? I haven't gotten back to it. I I'll. 
it's it's just been kind of an overwhelming couple of weeks oh my god yes i can really relate to that i think i suspect this one particular tube of paint so i'm going to and it's and i about finished it so i'm kind of hoping that was the problem like just kind of it was old and got a little grainy what happened janet I ha I've been having problems with my paint getting gritty. Huh. Acrylics or oil? Oils. They're the gambling. Weird. Gambling oils. And I thought on the last painting, I thought it was the canvas because it was a really crappy canvas. This painting, I had a good canvas and I primed it with three layers of primer, really expensive, high quality primer. So I know it's not the canvas. If you contact Gamblin and send the tube to them, they will look at it for you and probably also send you a replacement. Uh huh. But at least they'll look at it for you, you know, yeah. if nothing else, because they would be curious to know about their own product. They have good customer service. I just have to figure it out. You know, is it my brushes? Is it what's going on? I don't know what's going on. But I mean, I'm not really using any new materials that I haven't used before. Yeah. So Weird. I don't really get it. Weird. I wonder if it's weather related. I don't know. Could be. Could be. I mean, I have tubes of oil paint that are many, many years old and they're fine. Mm -hmm. Even through temperature changes in my studio, they're, they're fine. Yeah, it's true. Oil is fairly durable, so that seems strange. Yeah. yeah. I'm painting with acrylic paints I had 20 years ago, so. Yeah. Yeah, as long as they're airtight, those should be fine, too. Yeah. Be fine. Yep. In the apocalypse, it'll be the cockroaches and tree tubes with tightly lidded caps and they'll survive. Is that what you guys are saying? Pretty much, yeah. All right. It never goes bad. The only thing is it just can't get oxygen exposure. Right. As long as it's sealed airtight. I mean, it's good for decades. People have I've seen people who inherited paint from like their grandmothers in, in the fifties yeah. and they pull it out and it's just as good today. <laughs> hey, so Jackie, I'm kind of interested in what your answer is to Megan. Uh, well and draw, why should she go through the, why should, if it's hard, why should she do it? Well, she wanted to do it initially, and I guess it goes back to this whole growth and adaptive mindset thing. It's like, you know, when you, you want to do something and then you think, oh, I'll be good at that, and then it turns out that it's hard, and then instead of wanting to say, I can learn it and challenge yourself, you say, oh, I'm no, that's just something I'm no good at. Right. Right. I mean, if she hadn't wanted to do it, I would have been worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and here's, and do you think you guys are, do you think you're similar or do you think you're different? Like in, in like your, I mean, you're I think, obviously and she's a child, right? Yes. So I mean that. I mean, I mean more personality wise. No, at her age, I was very like that because we had we were a very competitive family, and you know if you didn't do so, if you didn't do something well, it wasn't worth doing it at all. Right. But as you know, in the last five years, I've gotten really conscious of well, it doesn't matter if you yeah. want something, you should just try it. You know what's interesting? I've always had this sense that the two of you are similar in that way, and what I think interesting is you as an adult you know to push through it and yep. so you're constantly pushing through right like I can see it I can see you going like and and now you've done it enough so that I think the reward is obvious right you're going to get something better than you thought 
and and there's a constant kind of improving that happens and there's a kind of fascination with the process yeah, yeah i have this but i had this feeling that like when we lost her that like oh yeah like she's kind of too worried about failing yeah too worried about failing she's not yeah but i don't really know what you do about that it's hard when you're a second kid you know well, she's a third kid she's got two gifted older siblings it's hard it's hard it's interesting but i think your modeling behavior for her that ultimately might change things. So I think that's also part of it. Probably. I hope so. Yeah. How old is she? She's 10. Huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, she's just starting all her tween age stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, her sister's actually a really good artist, but she won't come to class because she's like, she's shy. You know, and when she does come to class, she won't have her camera on and Right, exactly. That's right. And she typed in all her answers. She did good though while well, she did it. She yeah. Did. Yeah. And I can see that like it's a child. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was thinking, uh, I spent a lot of time talking to Emma about that, uh, making sure she went slow and, you know, how you make sure you go slow enough, how to make sure people have the time they need to finish a project. But I think it's good that she's watching you do this because eventually that will, it may not right at this moment, but later you'll be able to talk about it and you'll be able to say, yeah, I feel exactly the same way you do. I just uh, decided, you know, it was okay not to compete, right? Like it was okay just for me to be learning this. And I think they also have to, because school is so test-based, so test score-based, and I think they have to learn that that school, that they can do things outside of school that they're not being scored on, because everything at school is aptitude tests and where you compare with other people in math and reading and right. it's soul-destroying. Right. It is kind of soul-destroying. All of it. It can be yeah. So it's hard to know, like, and it helps to have the little successes at the end of a class help, but you kind of almost got to have faith that they'll happen. Yeah. You got to have faith that you don't know how to do it, and but there is a process. That's why I spend a lot of time uh, talking about technique. Like, we spent an awful lot of time drawing these very simple subjects because... I think that's going to help you as you start like, you know what I mean? Going in and drawing more complex things, but that have these shapes at their base. Um, and it, I also don't teach this at the very beginning because I think it's kind of wasted on people at the beginning. They don't even know, you know what I mean? Like if you did this lesson before trying to draw a few things, you wouldn't even know what you don't know. That's right. <laughs> so, so it's an interesting, yeah, I think about her a bit. Well, maybe she'll jump back in at some point. Emma's doing a lot of really fun things. Yeah, I've been watching the emails she sends and it'd be great to... No, we're talking about you though. No. Oh, well. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all good. She's running around with a box she's got a little personal pizza box that her dad got her I don't know where your dad is he's somewhere oh and then here's Mooka right now no longer crying happy and outside, laying on the studio floor. Here she is. Everybody take a picture of your pets and send them across, please. Say that again, Leah? Take a picture of your pets and send them across if they're doing oh. something cute. Let me see Sunny, Diana. Yeah, I'll 
So Leah, I have a confession. What's that? I haven't even gotten to Portland yet, and I've already started buying art from your people. <laughs> like who? I bought a painting from, oh, what's his name? Hold on. I love it. I am so excited. It came yesterday. <laughs> um, David. He, he took over the Instagram recently. Yeah, David um, Slater. David Slater or David no. Bridge? He's an abstract artist. The abstract guy who does like the graffiti. Oh, no, isn't that neat? Oh, he had this one he did of his backyard. And yeah. I just, I loved it. I just, <laughs> it was like, I have to have that. <laughs> so That's I bought it. I sent a picture of it to Lee and I said, what do you think of this painting? And he said, Love really it. Nice. I said, yeah, that's all the encouragement I need. Uh, isn't that, um, isn't that, uh, aren't those Instagram takeovers great? I loved his and I loved his studio tour. Yeah. Like, I loved everything about it. He totally, wow. he totally yeah. sold me. Totally and excited about My God, he like shipped that thing in a crate. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It must have cost a fortune. Um, how big was the painting? It's like 20 by 30, I think. He's Pretty big. 20 by 30 in a crate? Yeah. Wow. Well, he had it framed and he, he paints, so he paints on, um, on a thin panel and then he glues it to a wood block. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty heavy piece. Right. Okay, so then I, think, I wouldn't want to put that in a box. Yeah, I don't think he would survive the trip in a box. Probably knows how to build them himself because trading. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it's expensive just to ship. Yeah, we had to like unscrew the box to get Did it you out. Tell you knew me. Huh? Tell him you knew me. I still can't hear you. Did you tell him you knew me? Yeah, I told him I know you, and I told him that I think I'm going to be coming out there in October, and he was huh? really excited. Yeah. Yes, the Instagram takeover has been a really great uh, idea. It makes our Instagram really active. The artists are hilarious. And um, they're all, in everybody's enjoying it. Like they're, some of them are nervous about it, but they're all like enjoying getting this opportunity to kind of start to talk to people. It's like a practice or something. Really cool. I think it's really cool. I love seeing that he has a really cool studio. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing his whole setup and how he works. And he has a ton of paintings like stored in there and he has like a whole thing he built to store them. And it's just kind of fascinating. Um, oh my God, Jessica, your cats are so fucking cute. They're ridiculous. So cute. That's awesome, Janet. That's really awesome. I love it. That makes me happy. I love Muka's stripy tail. Yes, that's her little Armenian kitty, like raccoon tail. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All the other stripy. It was funny. At least the ones in my neighborhood. I don't remember him from. Um, he must not have been on the. Never been in before. Uh huh. Never been in before, as far as I know. We like fifty percent of the tour is completely new this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this puppy is done. Turned it over. Take a picture. Ah, uh, nice, nice, Diana. Come along. I like that sort of slack jawed, open mouth, teeth. 
Very nice. Thank you. I like your colors, Diana. I like the blue in particular. Great things with blue, Jessica. Yeah, I really love it. I like how she uses it as a half tone. Yep. Really, I agree. It's really neat. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good year. Although we're still like we're looking at Delta, it's. I know. Oh. I I bought a um, ref refundable ticket. Yeah, you brought a refundable ticket. Yeah. yeah we don't know. I'm I'm worried about it. I still feel it's going to be okay. I just think people will need to mask up. I think we'll know more in the fall. No more. Yeah. I mean, what have we been saying for the last year? We're going to know more in the next few months, and we always do. Yeah. But even like, you know, last summer, there's a dry in everything because of the warm weather. I think we'll know more in the fall. I agree too. I have a cousin who just got a breakthrough through case of Corona at her restaurant in Charleston, you know, and she was fully vaccinated. Um, but probably she's not as sick as she would be. Well, that's what they say. You can still get it. But they're also saying like everybody who's severely sick and in the hospital are unvaccinated. Yeah, I've heard of some case. I, I have a friend who knows a couple that got it and they both ended up in the hospital and one on a vent. They were both were vaccinated. They... Ah, shit. They Which had, vaccine? I don't know, but they had underlying conditions, you know, so like high risk but it's always saying it's always about the underlying conditions mm -hmm. but how can you how can you not take the vaccine if you have under well, they did take the vaccine okay. oh and they got still got sleep they got a break they got breakthrough infections oh yeah you can totally get oh. Fuck. yeah it's not yeah no that's the problem is that you can still get it even vaccinated i've started wearing masks and like out in public again. I'm not gonna, I mean, say it helps. I don't wear masks outdoors, um, but I do always indoors. Yeah, I'm, I do the same. And on the subway too. And most people on the subway are still wearing masks. Almost everybody that I see. Where I would wear masks in the subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually still required. Yeah. And I think it's still required in stores. So the restrictions haven't lifted for indoors, but very few people wear them outdoors. And I think that's fine. I really do. So Leah, I finally figured out the camera. Yeah. Oh. A couple weeks ago, I set it all up and I was like, oh, I'm just going to put it away again because I still haven't figured this out. And then it all clicked, it just like clicked. Really? And I photographed 27 pieces of art in one afternoon. <laughs> and uh, now I have to, I have to edit them. And I'm going to send them to my printer, some of them. I'm going to send like a representative sample and see how the proofs look. Mm -hmm. Then I'll know if I've got it or not. Oh, that's so exciting. Uh, oh my God, what a skill that is to be able to photograph your work. And you know, like if those photos are good, like I just paid for the whole rig with just that one session. I mean, because 
that would cost me a fortune to have photographed. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to jump off. I have totally lost steam, but I'm proud of myself for going for a half an hour. I'm exhausted. This is the first night half an hour. for several days that I have not worked late. And I got two really major things out that were really just weighing me and stressing me. And now that they're out, I can like relax and I'm just exhausted it's like this wave of exhaustion has just hit me i can congrats so. and you've gone for an hour and a half in Quincy. i know and i found my green pastel, and your green pastel. janet yeah. that's fucking awesome all right everybody have a wonderful evening and we will chat soon and happy painting maybe i'll pop in tomorrow if work is not insane yeah. except that it is it is always but <laughs> it's, it's it's like ridiculous it's it's intense congratulations so. for getting those things done though that's awesome thanks and thank you for holding space for me to come and sit at my easel because i wouldn't otherwise and uh, that's like a here. big deal we're here chop 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 we got paintings to make yeah it's true and you know like i go out all the time and paint but it's different than studio work and and I'm, I've like realized like my studio work really matters to me. It, it does matter that I don't get it done and I don't get it done and, and it it matters to me. Well, yes. And you so we're, we're here to make sure you, you know, keep doing, this is why Diana comes to almost every class. This is good. That's yeah. Accountable. Maybe I'll take an hour tomorrow uh, on your 11 a.m. and see if I can pop in. Depends on meetings. But thank you. Thank you all. Stay well and healthy. And I will make sure to bug Jean that our bullying tactics failed. Yes. Because now I feel like a failure. Wow. So I can bully her about that too. Yes. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Have a yeah. good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. I can't wait to see what she's working on. Janet, this is awesome. Are you going to paint this one? I know. Hey, this one's kind of cool. It's neat. This one would have to be pretty big. It, yeah. Like a like a thirty like a thirty by forty would be a good. Like one of the bigger ones I have here. Yeah, marker was hard on this one. Like it's just really hard to get the kind of blending that you want. So there's parts of it I don't like, but it would be cool to paint it. Jackie, how's it going with the coffee cup? Well, I might share it with you. My problem that I'm having is that the room I'm in has light coming from about five different directions. So I'm trying to cope with that, but I'll show you what I have. You can also direct light if you want to, like to, you know what I mean? You can, if there's a light that's close that you can- No, come. I've got a really high ceiling. <laughs> Oh, they're all so. The, well, show me what you got. Yeah, I needed to do this in a different room, maybe. Or just bring a lamp. Yeah. That can light more strongly. I mean, it's a challenge. <laughs> but this is the what you were discussing. I like this. This is starting to get you into that idea of sketching without a grid, right? Well, it's, the, it's the first time I've sketched not from a picture, right? And without a grid. Actually, that's not bad at all. Oh, it came through. Wow. Well. Um, so what I would say, so remember, oh, I see. So what I guess, oh, I see. So you've got something coming from ground lights and back lights and lights that way. Yes, I see it. So the only thing I would say is that you may want to adjust your mount 
circle. So let me show you what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. It still looks like this half. Is too high. Is, is the same size as this oh. and the same shape. Okay. What, right? This is kind of the normal mistake that we make. This yeah. real half. That's farthest away from us. See that? It's yeah. almost like a road going back to a single vanishing point. So carve that in a little bit. Okay. I think you'll see, you'll be, that's pretty good actually. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm still looking. Good job. That's really good actually. Okay, now I want you to do that a hundred times, Jackie. <laughs> or in general. Yeah, it's good. And Jackie, I'm very proud of you for this little cup. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm trying. It's fun. No, you are. It's you're making wonderful progress. And I am trying not to um, process what I'm seeing. I'm trying to just draw what I'm seeing rather than right. kind of intellectually understand it because. The intellectual process you're most in touch with is the left brain and it doesn't help right yeah that's why i think this lesson is a good one it's it's designed to remind you of how like light behaves yeah. on objects Now my children are insulting each other. Really good, Janet. Really, really good.
what do you think of um, Jackie? What do you think of the charcoal? I've actually switched back to pencil for the for the coffee cup, but I was enjoying the charcoal because I could smudge it nicely and. Exactly, exactly. You can smudge it and smear it and make it look softer. Yeah. That with pencil, but not the same. Right. Thank you. 
Anybody got anything else to send over? I can show you the one I started Saturday. Yes, It's our favorite figure model. I love it. Mr. Bonner. Dante's away for the summer. This is Brie. I'm, oh, Brie. Yes. Brie is definitely my favorite figure model. I'm going to do a landscape in the background of this. I'm still trying to get the concept totally down. I haven't decided quite yet. She bought a cello. We're going to leave you guys. Bye, Bye. Diana. Bye. Bye. Janet, that cello is like perfectly rendered. It's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, that's right. She's got short hair now. She has pretty much no hair. Her um, torso seems a little short. Or the legs seem short. Are they the right? Am I? Uh, or maybe the neck is a lot too. Something is. Something seems. Well, it's too late now. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. But am I right there that something seems? I don't know. Too. Let me look at the picture. Maybe that's how it is, but. Uh, she was pushed back pretty far from the cello. Is she staying with her mom now, now that she's here in Portland? Um, I think she's in the same place she was before. Was that with her mom? That was with her mom. It looks, it looks pretty much. Okay, I'll send this photo to you on um, Facebook. I don't yeah. want to send. I don't want to send naked Brie to the hole. Right. Good. Send it over, and I'll take it. Hmm. I think the legs is the, I think it's just foreshortening. She's pushed back. The cello is like kind of forward. I might have, I love her so much. Um, <laughs> I love her so much. This is such a great shot. I may look at it, Janet, just for like problem solving purposes. I don't, it's true. And yet something still, oh, I know what it is. It's like this area, it's this area you don't have the hip in. Uh, you've kind of scooched. I, I can show you. I'll, I'll draw some pictures and send them over. Okay. Um, it's challenging though. Like it's a super chat. Like it would be really hard to easy to miss what's happening here. You mean like I didn't puff the hip out? I, I, go, straight, I go straight from the torso to the any room for it at all. So it's like leg goes right to to the torso. Yeah. Torso. Yeah. So it's that's what feels short to me. Because that there's a piece there, right? Yeah. That's missing. Maybe I could try to pull that out and like put it in shadow so yeah it's, it's not 
Where's the mic? steak isn't as noticeable. Because I think the I think the I think stuff is in the right place. I think stuff is mostly in the right places. I'm not. <clears throat> I mean, if you want, like okay. if you look at where the cello, the little points come out, and where they are on her leg. Oh, I, I spent a lot of time trying to get that right, so I think it's right. But I think it's that hip. Right. I mean, the question is, Janet, you're not, we're not exactly clear the cello is exactly right. It looks good, but we're not sure. Oh, that's that true. The cello could be wrong too. It looks like the top of the cello is longer than it should be. That's my point. So when you're doing those measurements, really it's the head that becomes the basis because that's what you use to establish everything else has to be based off of that not off of something that looks pretty good but is not quite so maybe that's yeah. <coughs> um, yeah we're making it'll be it. less noticeable when i put all the background in i think i'm not worried about it i more just want you to learn it right yeah for you than for anything else it's just uh, it jumped out at me immediately <coughs> and i thought i should talk to you about it if that's all or just went hmm what's off here <laughs> However, a very sophisticated and nuanced conversation about drawing. Well, I just knocked over a whole door full of stuff. So, don't mind me, guys. I'm just can't hear you anymore. You're all garbled up. I just knocked over a whole drawer full of art supplies on the ground. You know. Oh. <laughs> hear me running around that's what i'm what i'm doing did i tell you about the time i knocked the whole jar of gesso off a shelf and it opened oh. <laughs> uh that was really fun oh my god Well, I like this. This was a nice, mellow class. It's kind of fun to have these. I'm going to drop off. Okay. Great work today. These uh, these things are so wonderful to see. Your these these creations of yours are fantastic. I'm really excited for you. Yep. I'm having fun with them. That's really important and you know, learning as well. It's amazing. I uh I can hold this up before I go. I I've been starting to put the greens in here. Here. Hold it up you as a spotlight. Oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Oh my god, he's looking awesomely dragon-like now. I love it. I I'm not I'm not um painting as often as I should be, but doing the best I can. You're drawing, that's okay. You know, as long as you're doing something, so yeah. it's always painting. Painting is a whole thing. It's a whole I have to yeah, I have to get in the headspace. It doesn't take much though. Like I, 
Wait, who else do we lose here? We've got Lana here. We lost. Who did we just lose? Oh, I left. left. Oh, that I guess that's true. <laughs> I guess it's just us left. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. All right. Everybody else. Nice seeing everybody. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you. Great work. Uh, we will not do this on Saturday, Jackie. So don't worry. We'll go back to working from photos and all of that stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Bye, Lana. See you guys. Take care.